Hi everyone, for this video we'll be discussing syphilis serology. We'll be discussing the non-treponemal and the treponemal tests which we use in the laboratory diagnosis of syphilis. So we have your question, which of the following is a confirmatory test for syphilis? A. RPR, B. FTA ABS, C. VDRL, or D. Automated reagent test. We'll go back to this question after our discussion. So, syphilis is caused by the organism Treponema pallidum. It is transmitted by sexual contact, direct blood transmission, or a transplacental route. The first diagnostic test for syphilis was the Wasserman test, and it was developed in 1906. In the treatment of syphilis, heavy metals such as arsenic were replaced by penicillin in the 1940s. The stages of syphilis include the following. Primary syphilis which is characterized by the presence of hard chancre at the site of inoculation, like what you could see here at the, at the top left. And this is described to be painless and firm. Secondary syphilis, on the other hand, is characterized by condyloma telata, which appear as wart-like lesions in moist areas of the body. Latent syphilis is characterized by the absence of clinical symptoms. Then eventually, the patient could progress to tertiary syphilis, which is characterized by the presence of comas and neurosyphilis. For the laboratory diagnosis of syphilis, we rely on non-treponemal tests as well as treponemal tests. The non-treponemal serologic tests are usually used for screening. They determine the presence of antibodies against cardiolipine. And we call these antibodies as reagent or reagenic antibody. The reaction which occurs between reagent and cardiolipine is known as flocculation, like what we could see here at the right. The tests for treponemal antibodies are usually used for confirmation. The non-treponemal tests are again based on flocculation reactions in which patient antibody complexes with cardiolipine antigen. This determines the presence of reagent, which is an antibody that forms against cardiolipine. Examples of non-treponemal tests include your VDRL or your venereal disease research laboratory test and your RPR or the rapid plasma reagent test. These are the two most common non-treponemal tests. This table differentiates the VDRL test and the RPR test. Both of this, again, rely on flocculation. They both detect reagent. For the sample, we usually use serum. For the VDRL, the serum undergoes heat inactivation at 56 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes. And this inactivates complement. RPR, on the other hand, does not require the use of heat inactivated serum. What we use in the RPR is unheated serum. In the reagent for the RPR, choline chloride inactivates complement. For the antigen, VDRL uses uh, a reagent comprised of cardiolipine, lecithin, and cholesterol. RPR on the other hand uses the original VDRL antigen plus the isodium salt of EDTA charcoal, which makes the test easier to read, phosphates, thimerosal, which serves as a preservative, and choline chloride, which is again used to inactivate complement. The positive reaction for VDRL would be microscopic clumps. For RPR, it would be macroscopic agglutination, which is made possible by the charcoal incorporated in the RPR antigen. We have discussed the specimen already. For the rotator settings, for your VDRL, it is 180 RPM at 4 minutes. Then for the RPR, it would be 100 RPM for 8 minutes. VDRL could be used for CSF testing. So it could be used for the laboratory diagnosis of neurosyphilis. Treponemal tests, on the other hand, detect antibody directed against treponema pallidum organism or against specific treponemal antigens. They usually become positive after the non-treponemal tests. Once an individual becomes reactive, the individual remains so for life. This is the reason why when it comes to monitoring treatment of syphilis, we rely on non-treponemal tests. Since the non-treponemal tests eventually become negative after the patient is treated. The treponemal tests, on the other hand, remain positive. So you cannot use them for that purpose. Treponemal tests have fewer false positives, but cross-reactivity is seen with other treponemal diseases like Yos and Pinta. The first 
Treponemal Test developed was the Treponema Pallidum Immobilization Test, or TPI. This was first developed for the detection of specific antitreponemal antibodies. It involves mixing of patient serum with live actively motile Treponema Pallidum extracted from testicular chancre of a rabbit and complement. For the reporting, we report the test as positive if more than 50% of the treponemes are immobilized. It is reported as negative if less than 20% are immobilized, and the range of 20 to 50% represents an area of doubtful result. Another treponemal test is your FTA-ABS or fluorescent treponemal antibody absorption test. Here, the patient serum is heat inactivated and prepared with a sorbent consisting of non-pathogenic treponemes, particularly of the writer strain. This removes cross-reactivity with treponemes other than Treponema pallidum. Nicole strain of Treponema pallidum that have been fixed to the slides are used for the test. This could be used on serum or CSF and the positive reaction is fluorescence, like what you could see here on the left. So for the FTA ABS, again, the Nicole strain of Treponema pallidum is fixed on the slide. The patient serum is applied to this and if the patient has treponemal antibodies, these treponemal antibodies will attach to the antigens on your nicol strain of treponema pallidum. Afterwards, we apply a secondary antibody with a fluorescent label. Then after washing, we view this under a fluorescent microscope and again, the positive reaction will be fluorescence. As for the interpretation, if the RPR is reactive and the FTE is reactive, the patient is confirmed to be positive for syphilis. If the RPR is reactive, but the FTA is non-reactive, this is considered to be negative, and the reactive RPR is considered to be a false positive. If the RPR is non-reactive, and the FTA ABS is reactive, this could mean that the patient has late, latent, or previous syphilis. Remember that the RPR eventually becomes uh, non-reactive once the patient is treated. And the FTA ABS uh, remains reactive since the treponemal antibodies persist for life. Okay, so going back to the question, which of the following is a confirmatory test for syphilis? The answer would be FTA ABS, which is a treponemal test. The RPR, as well as the VDRL, are non treponemal tests, so they are just used for screening. If you think this video is useful, please like our video or subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching.